Susan here. Okay, let's show you how to hem these velour track pants more professionally by machine. I did a video that was showing you how to do the track pants by hand, step by step for beginners. We're going to do this one a little bit more closer to the original. That's what's next. seems storm Eta is causing havoc on the area it's just calmed down and I want to get this video to you guys uh, so I'm going to try to shoot it now um, like I said this is a velour track pants it is done professionally let me show you what you're going to need as far as tools and the hem itself and let's see how close we can get to that look of the hem that's what's next all right so the tools you need some kind of a straight ruler Taylor's chalk or a pencil, a tape measure, some pins, small scissors or a seam ripper, and of course fabric scissors. All right, this is the hem. It is kind of weird because usually, usually, hopefully you can see that, it will focus for you. Um, the, it is usually a cover stitch machine, meaning that the inside of this has this zigzaggy type of stitch and then on the outside is usually a double row of top stitching. That is typically what the cover stitch for professional um, sort of sewing on knit fabric. The reason why I say knit fabric is because look how this stretches and it has to be able to give. There are a couple of ways we could do this. Let's attempt this now, but first let's get this on so I can pin it up. So here I am with the pants. I'm trying to look in the mirror itself. And it's really, it's just slightly too long, probably just one little bit. So I'm just going to turn it up, put one pin in the front. And one pin in the back just check it in the mirror to see if that's not if it's going to be too short I think that's where I want it to be all right we can do the rest of it on the flat okay so these are the two pins that I had on there and the good news and the bad news the, the bad news is that I can't go any further getting the other one pinned up because I have to take out the original hem. The reason why I have to do that, and the good news is we can do that, um, but you have, when it's that close, you can't just cut off the excess because it's too close to the original hem. So let's go ahead and take this original hem off now. Just trying to get all the layers of the stitching inside. So I can go across. All right, now that I have it opened up like that, I'm putting my seam ripper on stitch to stitch. I'm going to take that out. I'm just taking out stitch by stitch. Very carefully, it's black. And once you take out those stitches, all this unravels. Now the original hem has been taken out. Um, and I have this marking here where the fold line was, so we can go back there now on those two markings and pin this up. Making sure now that we have it pinned correctly, I have the front, of course, as I, you will see on my other video, is going to be shorter than the back, so that is the way it's supposed to be on knit or track pants. 
go ahead and put in some more pins here around bringing this leg to the other side having the waistband kissing the same location moving the back crotch out and then folding the other leg to match this one. They might not be the same, so don't assume they're the same. Go ahead and check them. It looks like that side is a little bit less actually. You can see that it's where the stitching is that the fold is on. Just checking. Put enough pins. Pin this side as well. Checking to see that that's that's good. And it's good here as well. Once I have that, I'm going to take those pins out and put it exactly on the fold so I can mark my, my fold line like that. do the same on this side putting my pins right on the fold line itself now I can release the excess this way so we can trim off whatever we need to trim off one leg at a time. Take your tape measure and do one and a quarter. Put a chalk mark there like that. Trimming that off. Doing the same to this bag, one and a quarter. I'm going to search that raw edge because it's real. This velour is just very flimsy. Now I'm using a four thread serger, and I'm going to clean off that X that edge. I like the four threads because then it's, it's a wider stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut very little off. Surge that edge. Be careful with the pins. I'm going to do the other leg and then we're going to get to the iron. Just folding up the hem where that mark is putting pins on the outside, making sure it's even from the top to the bottom. It's 
it to the iron now. Okay, like I said on the other video, you cannot press velour. It is a pile fabric and you will match the actual threads. All you can do is just steam to get my line. So I'm putting the iron further away, adding the steam. Doing the other side as well. Just for that little bit of relaxation and marking. Okay. Do that to both legs. Let's get to the sewing machine now. So it kind of comes standard on most machines now, even this inexpensive Singer machine I have, is what's called a stretch stitch. And this one has it too, and I didn't even know, I kind of discovered it. So that is the S for the stretch stitch. And I'm going to keep it in the um, center as far as location for the needle. I don't want it far over to the right or the left. I'm going to have it in the center. And I'm going to do this actually on the right side. This, which can be a little tricky for some people. You, because you want to make sure that the underneath part is staying flat. And I'm going to be checking, I'm going to be putting it from the needle position. I'm going to do it three quarters from the needle position. And then I'm just going to take the pins out as I go. And here we go. And I'm just going to go and try to follow that line, that three quarter mark. And hold it steady. every once in a while make sure that your excess underneath is staying intact and not curling on you holding it flat it's a heavy seam so I'm going to help it over it stitch what's called one foot stitch away. So I'm putting the edge of the foot along that first stitching line and I'm doing the same thing. I'm doing another stretch stitch. I'm going over that hump. Guiding the foot that way, making sure underneath is laying flat. Stitched a little bit, take it off, 
And the reason why I'm using a stretch stitch is because it will stretch. See that? Like a professional hem would have the stretch stitch, but we're just doing it in processes. It's not all in one like a industrial machine would be able to do, but you've got the serging thread here, and then you have the double stitching here, as you can see on the back, as well as the front. All right, guys, so get cracking, get those hems done, because it's worth it in the end to have it done right using those stitches, both the uh, Merrill machine and that stretch stitch, and you can get as close as you can to that professional stitch that they do in the industry. Hope you like this video. Give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.